Richard, I've given you a list of questions. Welcome to Paranormal Palace Radio, where truth equals reality, and truth is often stranger than fiction. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk Now Radio. This is your host, Royce the Redneck Radio Man. And joining me today is going to be Georgia Love, who's been a guest on my other show, Paranormal Palace Radio, in the past. Only that time she was talking about her book, Escape from Manhattan, or is that Escape to Manhattan? I'm not looking right at it. Um, Escape, Escape from. from. Okay. And uh, tonight we're going to be talking about self-publishing and how to do it for a minimal cost and do it effectively, which is something else that she's got a lot of experience in, that she's agreed to come share with us tonight. And also want to let everybody know that in the very near future, we'll probably be moving per, uh, Paranormal Palace over to this show and operating one show to, you know, make everything more convenient and less confusing. So, uh, Georgia, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. And it's wonderful to be on your show again. I am starting out behind, Georgia. Let me tell everybody your URL. Her uh, site is www.escapefrommanhattan.com. And you can learn more about her and everything she does there. And, Georgia, don't you have another website? Yes, I do. Loves Publishing, all one word, dot net. So www.lovespublishing.net. And there I, ta- you know, I have the information for new authors, especially authors that are dealing with uh, paranormal, um, anything to do with ghosts, UFOs, all of this, because we are not mainstream, and I doubt if we will ever be able to get the backing by the mainstream publishers. So we are going to have to go out on a limb to make things happen, I think, for ourselves. Now, when publishing with mainstream publishers, don't you have to have a huge chunk of money up front, or do they hold it out of sales, or how does that work? Oh, my God. The way it is today, you have to start out self-publishing, and God knows if you can find anyone that's honest out there in the self-publishing world, because I have not. Uh, I won't name any names, but do contact me at the end of the show if you're thinking of spending a thousand to ten thousand with self-publishing companies because you're wasting your money. Thirty thousand books get published a month. It's a guarantee if you go through the self-publishing process, your book will be buried. And I can explain to you how this happens. Okay, why don't you do that real quick? Okay, they then send, after they've taken your money and the uh, so-called editing, where they have a grade 8 student in a third world country edit your book for you, because then they can charge you another $500 to have you redo your book with them, okay? It's the biggest game going. I'm not kidding. It's really pathetic. Uh, and it doesn't seem in Canada or the States that the government wants to take a stand on helping authors whatsoever. It's it's the Wild West out there when it comes to self-publishing. Uh, what I have found in the last two years, uh, and nearly $2,000 later, has just been incredible. Um, and I will say Trafford Publishing was the one that did me the most harm. Um, anyway, uh, in my opinion, okay, we'll say in my opinion, okay. that is what, I just can't believe it, okay? First of all, I get a British actor, okay, in Victoria, Canada, with a British accent and an Oliver name, which is very British, uh, pretending to be a publishing company in Canada, okay, and I'm being Canadian, I wanted to work with my own country, found out, oh no, it's a printing company in Canada, that's it. And so my book went there, and they didn't like my subject matter because it was paranormal, okay? I'm talking about expose of what happened with the Twin Towers. I'm talking about exposing different religious groups and what they do with their children. I am really, this book is a hot number. And when it came out in July of 2011, Mm -hmm. Escape from Manhattan. The Hurricane Irene was hitting New York, and they had the earthquake. People were were Googling the term Escape from Manhattan like crazy, okay? And when they went on, of course, my book came up at this company, right? Okay. But it was in children's books ages Uh two to five years of age. Now, this is a super serious book with tons of important information in it. 
deep Along stuff with that a good two year olds would never begin to understand. Well, worse, if they thought it was a big joke. Anyone that went there thought it was a joke. And I had it for sale for nineteen ninety five. But what these self-publishing companies do, they immediately turn around and put the, the book in with Amazon. Amazon immediately drops it to twelve ninety five or thirteen ninety five, whatever their whim is that day for your particular book. Worse than that, they then have stats. So it's a brand new book, you're a brand new author, and when people read down, they see you have not sold any books, you're one in 500 million books sold. So obviously nobody wants to buy your book because you have no sales track of your books selling. And they do that with every self-publishing company out there. They literally, with that move alone, bury your book. Okay? Does that make sense to anybody? Well, it does to me, but that's a, you know, doesn't seem like it's profitable to them either. Like they're they're screwing themselves along with you, ain't they? Um, I don't think so because they've already seen $1,200 out of me, which isn't a whole hell of a lot of money. But when you start to count up, 30,000 books are published every month. And nobody's taking accountability for the authors. I met three other authors in Canada that had gone through this particular company. We all have exactly $26 in royalties. Do you know the odds of us all selling exactly the same amount of books? It's ludicrous. You'd and think it's not a lot either. Enough, enough ambition to at least vary the number. <laughs> okay. That is nowhere near to enough to survive. Okay, where's it gets worse? They then take your book and they put it on eBay. That means you can't even advertise your book on eBay because they've taken your ISBN number and they've placed it there. So you can't put your book there. Okay, so again, they've buried your book. I don't know if anybody's listening or not. But my God, to know... I can assure you, they're not listening now. They will be listening. These are uh, shows I do. They get around. They get around quite a lot. If not live, they do it in podcast format. Well, I just, I wanted, I would love this whole thing to go viral. I would like to let authors know that there's nothing wrong with the books they're writing. It's just that you have to take a whole new approach of doing it. Because the problem is, the real publishers will not touch you till you have a bestseller. If you have 10,000 books to sell, and it costs you $5 a book to produce that book, if you have $50,000, you then have a bestseller. Or if you're a movie star or a sports hero or whatever, a politician, yeah, you can then get your book out there because you can go to these people ahead of time and get your book already sold before you do the 50000 to get the 10000 out there. That is how Chicken Soup for the Soul first started. They had all the churches across the states and Canada already buying the book before it was even done. Okay, and so when you realize that this is the kind of like they went door to door with copies of it. Well, I don't know if they went door to door, but they had the fifty, you know, the fifty thousand dollars ready to do the first ten thousand. So yeah, we got a bestseller. And when you start to see that this is the mandate of getting your books out there, let's face it: how is a person going to get a book out there about UFOs or ghosts if that's the kind of bridge you need to make it happen? Yeah. It's not going to happen. And my my situation is I'm concerned that the ordinary author, when they real the average author, 90% of us, produce about 100 books. And by the way, this particular company wanted $15 a book. So 100 books at $15 a book, I think that's 1,000. Oh, it's a lot of money. And, of course, then you're sitting with these books and nobody wants to buy them because you don't have a name yet. Okay, you haven't done any way of marketing. Oh, that's the other thing. If you've got $10,000, Goodreads or uh, these other different companies connected to all of this will then uh, help you with your book. But can you tell me how many new authors would have $10,000 sitting in their bank account to do that? I wouldn't. Okay, it just doesn't happen. 
Now, I did get lucky and I did find Create Space where I was able to take my book, which was now a book, and put it through with a new ISBN number, change it up. I went from 350 pages down to 250 pages on purpose because now I can mail that book for $4 instead of $12 a copy. Because when you start talking mailing of a book at twelve dollars a shot, you got to be spending forty dollars, you know, charging forty dollars to make it happen. Especially when this company wants fifteen dollars for each book. Well, you got nothing left over for you to make my. Uh, uh, yeah. Depending it, on the it, size it, of the book, most books go from anywhere from fifteen to twenty dollars. Yeah. Right now, the funny part is the people that have. I've <laughs> only produced fifty books to date. Okay. I do a lot of uh, Kindles, EPUBs, and PDFs for people. But the that actual book, I've done 50 at this point. But out of those 50, unless somehow someone has taken my book, put it through somewhere, and gotten a different ISBN number, and I'm putting them out there, which when you go through self-publishing, this can happen because you don't have anyone protecting you. Nobody's going to protect you. You have to do your own book yourself, Connect with a, a self-publisher, form your own self-publishing company if you have to, or work like I'm offering a co-op. I'm offering other authors to connect with me, and let's work as a team. Let's get these paranormal books out that the mid, mid, uh, mainstream don't seem to want to help get out there. Because you see, there is a real agenda for the publishing companies to do what they call dumbing down the masses. And you and I know about that, right? And I've heard it quite a, I've, actually, I've read quite a bit about that. They don't want the average citizen to really know what's going on in our world. Let's keep them stupid. So I'm hoping that the preppers out there, because they're pretty smart, and we've got 35% of the U.S. population that are aware, and from what I understand, the stats have got are prepping. At least to some degree, they realize that it's important to plan ahead. Now, that wouldn't have been there seven years ago. That's only in the last little while that people are realizing we have to take responsibility for ourselves and to gain the knowledge that we need. And so these paranormal books and New Age books and UFO books, they're vital to get out there to the population of those preppers if no one else wants them. I think 35% of the population would love to get their hands on my book to be honest, and the books that, that the people that you interview on your stations, like the fellow that's coming on tomorrow night. What's his night, name with Paranormal Palace? Uh, Joe Kovac, I believe it is, uh, The Divine Secret. Yeah. So these are the books that the, the general uh, publishing companies really don't want out there, in my opinion, because they're sure making it awful hard for a first-time author or people like ourselves producing these books to get them going. It's it's just about, it's very difficult. If it wasn't for shows like yours, and you know how scarce you are, like I mentioned, how many more program, radio shows in the U.S. do you think are like yours? Actually, very few. Few people know the uh, technology to do what I do. That's right. You're very, very wonderful to have. Like, there is blog blog talk radio, but it's nothing compared to what your station is there, and I know that. Well, they got a um, a prettier-looking website and a, a lot more people located in one spot. However, they um, the hosts that they have there are basically pretty inexperienced, and they can't afford to keep their shows going because it costs $40 a month to do a show there unless you only want 30 minutes. And you really can't explain much in 30 minutes. You just get going. <laughs> and you can't afford $40 a month for two hours. So you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Oh, you'd be paying out a lot more because you do your shows every week, don't you? Well, no, it's $40 no matter how many shows you do. Oh, oh okay. And I usually do two or more shows a week. Yeah, I know. I wish you would do more. <laughs> <laughs> it really just kind of depends on how busy I am and... You know, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'm not reliable because, um, well, I'm not in the health I used to be in, and sometimes I get surprised into the hospital, and then my shows go on hold, but I do the best I can with what I got. I sure wish you could train somebody to take over when you can't be there, 
because I know that there's a wealth of information that comes through your show. Well, I know that uh, there it, are a couple of publishing companies also, um, New Page Books and uh, Inner Traditions. They do take paranormal books, but I don't know. I never went to them as an author, so I don't know how much they charge and what kind of um, how they treat their authors, in other words. Well, I know there's Balboa Press, but they wanted $2,000. And uh, I don't know. They're pretty mainstream, too. I don't think they would have ever taken my book, uh, Escape from Manhattan. It's It has just way too much uh, out-of-the-box information in that for people. Uh, my my book is for the preppers. Uh, and like you say, when you go to a, a bigger show, it's kind of like going to these um, – bigger uh, publishing companies, some of your bigger shows, they had to answer to media people, and there's cer- uh, certain information. They either don't want it put out on the air or they want it put out in just such a way as to make it sound a certain way. Exactly. And the information in my book uh, particularly <clears throat> is so important for people to have. And there is such an agenda to not let it be. I tried advertising it on uh, a cra- uh, cra- uh, run up uh, Craigslist and KGG, and they would not let me put it on there uh, because I was advertising expose on September the 11th, and there's no way they would let it run. Well, let me ask you this: Do you recommend people use um, Amazon Creative Space to sell their books on? I, I'm not sure about that. I've got a girl that just bought the book uh, from Amazon because it, Amazon is the mother of Create Space, correct? And she ordered it from Amazon, and she still doesn't have it. So whether there's a, a glitch between Amazon and Create Space as to why she doesn't have the book, they've got Trafford's book on there, and I canceled anything with Trafford nearly – well, 18 months ago, and I have begged and begged Amazon to get Trafford off of the site that advertises my book because they don't have the right to be there anymore. I mean, there's no way they can pay me any royalties because I've canceled them, so what are they doing selling my book? Plus the Kindle that I asked Amazon, Create Space to put, or pardon me, Trafford to put on Amazon. Uh, never sent, saw a cent. What was going on is Trafford would tell me that Amazon Kindle would pay me my royalties. Amazon Kindle would tell me that Trafford would pay me the royalties from my ebook, my Kindle. And it went on and on for two years like that. Never saw one cent. Now, the thing that's interesting is that when I was Googling in that period of July, uh, August, September on uh, Escape from Manhattan, and, and I'd see myself up there, uh, escape from Manhattan and going to Trafford, but it was up there, the first ten pages of Google, seven, eight, nine times a page. Like, that book should have gone viral right then if it had have been treated with respect and put in the right place. But it wasn't, and they refused to do that for two months. But it did go to Italy, and Amazon Italian, from what I could see on on Google, had translated it into Italian, and it was supposed to be the best-selling book in Italy, uh, e-book in Italy, during that period of time, and I never saw one cent of royalties from it. And it seems to me that that could very easily have been because you've got a large Italian community in Manhattan and New York, and every grandma over in Italy reads the tea leaves for their family. The word psychic is not an ugly word in Italy. It is quite respected, actually. And I can see that book, e-book, actually doing very well in Italy, but not one cent of royalties from it. So... So you know, at this point, I'm sitting here. I mean, Trafford is owned by Author House, okay? It's an offshore company for Author House. And, I, you know, I've talked numerous times with Author House and said, look, I mean, you can't tell me no, none of my books, are, you know, the book has not sold one copy, you know, or maybe in, in a year, six months, not a copy, not a Kindle, nothing. And, I mean, there's no way that you can find out from these companies exactly how many of your books sold because it's their word. You have to take their word on how many sold. I wouldn't even do business of a place that didn't offer me a record. 
oh, they can send you a record, but there's no way to verify that record. That is the wild thing. And meeting three other authors that went through this company, one of the girls uh, that did the book was on breast cancer. She had cu- cured her breast cancer twice with native um, herbs. And she'd spent $5,000 with them. And she want, I mean, she's fighting breast cancer at the same time that she's writing this book and recovering from breast cancer. And that book could have healed so many women with breast cancer, saved so many lives, and she could not get her book out there. $26 in royalties. $5,000 later. I mean, she just criminal. wasn't rich enough to get it out there. Criminal. You know, um, there, there's got to be a way that authors like ourselves that are working with these subjects are respected somewhere. <laughs> and that someone out there, I mean, if there's a philanthropist whose mother or wife just died with breast cancer, hello, we need your help. <laughs> because we can't do it on our own. Well, I think before everybody's going to stand up and take notice to you, is you're going to have to be a bestseller, uh, you know, to because they have to think they're going to make a profit off from you, in other words. And I noticed right now, one, I might add. <laughs> right now, I've got on YouTube a video for three minutes that's running, and it's been posted, the a video uh, on YouTube has been posted out of Denmark, and I am getting uh, people from Denmark and Holland uh, emailing me all the time. They're so excited about my website and what I'm doing with the book. They're just thrilled. Now, you know, Europe is very educated on the whole. Uh, they, they have the same problems as we, as we do with the 1% and the banking system and the European euro and all the stuff that's going on. I mean, they're, they're suffering like we are. But they're very educated people. They're very aware. And when they see my book and hear about it, they're excited. So I don't know if it'll ever happen in Canada or the States, but if it could just go viral in Europe. Right now, I do have it for sale in Europe with Amazon and Create Space. So I'm hoping that something's going to give there. You just hadn't had any uh, results from it yet? Well, every time I talk, okay, this is funny. This is the kind of crap that's going on. I have friends and people I know in Canada that have bought my book. They get a thank you email from Amazon for buying my book through Create Space. They get the book delivered to them, but there is no record of me selling that book and no royalties from Amazon Canada because Amazon Canada does not connect with Amazon U.S. And there is absolutely no phone numbers to connect with anybody. Their legal department, you've got a fax. You never get a return fax. You try trying to con- connect with Amazon uh, as an author with Can- Amazon Canada or Amazon U.S. Kindle, it's totally email. So why? Why would they set it up like that? You ask yourself why. I couldn't even begin to figure out why, much less ask myself. I wouldn't want to ask myself something I couldn't answer. <laughs> and when I go to Create Space, no sales. Although the books were, were delivered in Canada with Amazon.ca. So, yeah. I'm one upset Canadian. <laughs> well, I know there was a guy named William James who was on my show many years ago, and he told me that his book sales went up at Amazon.com after doing my show, and that Amazon turned right around when the book sales went up and raised the price of the book. Oh, yes. They've had my book. Oh, that's the thing that really bugs me the most. They have used copies there. How can they have used copies there if the book has never sold? Because Travers telling me it's never sold. Create Space is telling me it's never sold. Now, granted, at least with Create Space, I can buy my book for five dollars, and I can sell it off my website and deliver it to you from my website. Then I actually will see some money. It'll cost me $5 to ship it to you, but if I sell it for $25, I will actually see 15 So if you go to my website, you will get the book. Okay, www.lovepublishing.com. And, uh, no, this... dot .net. Love oh, dot .net. .net. I'm going to the wrong Love Publishing. Yeah, lovespublishing.net. You could buy it from there. 
and you can buy it from escapefrommanhattan.com. And I can also sell, send you the Kindle, a PDF, or an EPUB. Like, I am determined to get the book out there. I'm not going to... Most authors, 90% of the authors with the self-publishing process, order 100 books, pay the 2000 to the company, and hand out their books, give them out, and then quit. So do you know how much talent we're losing? It's really sad. Really, really sad. That that they, they think it's their book isn't good enough. No, it's the way the system has been set up so that they can't win. Just it's the way it is. You know, um, I would love to see them connect with me at Love's Publishing Number One. I am a self publisher. I'm also a publisher, and I do not take their book. Their book is their book. I would never steal their book. I am what you would call a renegade publisher because I will not claim their book as mine because most publishers, in my opinion out there, and even self-publishing companies, try to take your book. And this is wrong. That is like taking somebody's child. The the amount of energy that goes into writing a book, that author should be able to control that, that book. There's no way they should ever have to give that book to a publisher. Okay. While you were talking, I went to your website. It took me a minute to get there because I was doing love pub- publishing, not loves. So, folks, remember that's L-O-V-E-S, publishing. Don't dot make net. a mistake that I made. <laughs> dot net. And dot net. Yeah, dot net. Because and it is wrong what's going on in the publishing world today. Very wrong. And people can come to this website and they can... uh contact you through it and you'll help them publish their book yeah i mean if they need editing i will help edit their book i will show them how to set up their own website so they can sell their book off their own website what my goal was that a group of people could get together have like you have on your website a a section for each author so they go there and also on their own like it links straight to their own where they can sell right off their website their book the printing, they can go to Lightning Source, get their book printed for 4 or $5, depending on the size. Create space, you can do it too. You can get your book mailed, shipped, UPS, right straight to you, and then you deliver out from there. Then you're in control of your book. Plus, you can do CDs, which is even more affordable for an author. Put your book on a CD. And that is a wonderful way to get known because libraries want CDs for books because of the blind uh, people having to travel so many miles for their job. They love the CD books, and you can produce them very affordably. Yeah, and CD books are really getting to be popular nowadays, I've noticed. Yeah, you can read that book right onto a CD, right on your computer. Copy it and send it out there. If there's ISBN numbers, uh, in Canada especially, our ISBN numbers don't cost anything. <laughs> so, Must be nice. I think in the, in the state you have to pay for your ISBN number, which is kind okay. of funny. Now, are you just publishing New Age and Spirituality, or do you also cover UFOs, uh, ghosts? Oh, yes. yes, yes. UFOs, ghosts, Bigfoot, um, you know, uh, Area 51, Harp. Oh, my God, yes. Anything on Harp. Um, Anything that the midstream would not want. And believe me, they don't want those books. They want to bury them. I wanted to ask you that specifically because a lot of folks nowadays, they consider New Age as a religion. And actually, New Age is not really a religion per se. It's more... um, it's more an area of interest, it would seem to me like, and a lot of things that's not mainstream. Yes. Uh, they're probably alternate books, I guess a person could say. Books that the mainstream people don't want. But that's, hey, that's only 65% of the population. There's still 35% that would love our books. That's why it's called well, yeah, you got publishing. books out there by uh, Gnostics that are not exactly welcome and mainstream because they don't go along with the dogmatic Catholic version, for example. Exactly. Yes. Um, uh, Near-death experiences. Um, Reincarnation. Books on reincarnation. Um, Anything that is not mainstream, I'm here. I want to see these authors, see the light of day, get their work out there, and be respected and, and appreciated 
<laughs> Do you have a means of um, helping them out with records so they can see what kind of progress they're making? Um, I will have my books wide open to anybody. I'm not out here to sh- to to uh, 